Hey guys, this is a pre-recorded game. We're playing against Hot Somali. Um, he's has Ibids, and we're playing on Himeyama. And uh, we'll play it from our point of view or with our vision. And uh, we decided to do a um, Dark Age Horseman rush. Ibids being a Predominantly a fast castle sieve. Um, getting under the gold is kind of really key. So that's what we decided to do, is just gonna focus on getting the gold and maybe dropping a tower on it. And um Hatsumal is a really good player, he's a conk three. I know that he hasn't been playing recently a lot, so he was definitely a bit rusty um when we played him. I, I don't think he played last season, at least not on his main account. Um, perhaps on another one. So he's got his base. We do see kind of what appears to be a mining camp here. So we are rallying our stable over here. Decent sheep. Do a miss micro there. We do see a sheep over here. So we do know there's a couple sheep over by our base once our con gets back. And this one sheep that we gathered here. And um, you can see kind of the strength of this build because he's just getting onto gold now, right? So and it's definitely kind of like, you know, annoying and, you know, kind of, it puts you in a weird spot, right? Because he's used up all of his wood, dropping a mill, dropping a house, dropping a mining camp, and now he's got to transition into either getting a barracks or going for a cheap um, age 2 which only needs 125 gold right um, I age up faster and it's cheaper right so that's why we kind of wanted to force that kind of a play right and we see him not pull any bills here we're still gathering sheep over here we've got eight nine sheep which is great because we've got another secured one at base here too but we know he's suffering for gold, right? And um, he's gonna go long mine this other gold camp. Look at his vision. Okay, he just did his side. So at this point, we thought he might have been denied his age of gold and he would be dropping a barracks at this point and he's mining wood. So we're expecting at any moment to have to deal with um, spearmen, but it hadn't happened, which is kind of nice. We are sending a villager over to drop a tower. If he does make spearmen, we're just going to have to try to do our best and then try to get this tower to go up, but um, yeah, no guarantee. Now he does start aging up and it's very inconspicuous the age up so we didn't really notice he is a little bit miss macro in here he's definitely way too heavy on um, food so he probably should have pulled some villagers onto wood at this point um and i don't think he can see my tower getting dropped he can't right which is great for us and we are gonna get this burn down right on this mining camp and he's starting to um, rally onto wood now. And we are starting to rally onto gold. And we got still mostly heavy on food here. And we're still producing horsemen here and there. The idea was to be food heavy um, to, be, to, to, to kind of secure this tower going up with more horsemen being produced, right? And he's looking to go for some sort of fast castle. But it's a weird fast castle because typically you want to rush your gold, right? So him rushing this um, is kind of funky. So we see another house getting dropped. We do find this gold over here and we see that it has been picked. Um, he's been grabbing resources from there so we now know that Ajep is on the way probably and it's probably the advancement one but it would make sense for him not to have a mining camp here. And he does get it to come out. 
and with the tower we're able to see this um, that culture wing had gone up and we're just kind of harassing his uh, his food here a little bit getting a little bit of idle time and now the big thing is going to be denying his um, his barracks or his, um, his his drop on the gold here right so we're kind of patrolling on this gold we're tapping up ourselves behind this and he's got a lot of food stored up, so he can go to castle. Um, kind of a weird play. But definitely, probably just kind of showing his um, kind of rustiness um, from not playing a bit, because it's definitely not ideal to have a ton of food floating. So he looks to drop like a tower or something there. We were able to get a little bit of harassment, but we lose a horseman. <clears throat> and we see him going for this tower, so we do pull some horsemen out. And um, we are kind of in range here, so we can't really, like, truly commit to this. So we just try to get raids, kind of, like, hits where we can. You know, picking a villager here and there is nice, but if we can't, we can't. And uh, so we just kind of fall back here, right? Perhaps we should just stay and focused on burning instead. But this tower doesn't actually secure this gold, right? We still have this gold secured um, on our own. We are dropping our Ubu. Really late, but we are dropping it. We have no eco text, neither does he. We're trying to rally on the wood here. Symmetry is going to go get set up. And we're trying to um, burn down this outpost. And we're dropping a tower on these wood lines here. He's got these back two wood lines in this gold mode, um, but it's kind of tough to get there. So the big thing is with these four towers, we're um, getting really good vision in terms of when he rotates and being able to harass him if he goes for these forward wood lines. And we want to just kind of focus our troops towards the the front, uh, towards the gold side here. So he's pulling a massive amount of units onto gold now. We did kind of a bad job not denying um, this tower over here, right? This tower was super um, exposed. It would have been very easy for us to deny. So a little bit of a mistake on our part, getting tunnel vision here on this. We could have just left one horseman in here and just gone over to his gold. Because that was that's really the, the determining factor of what's gonna, um, well, what he's going to do, right? So I'm trying to get at the scout. We are starting to trade. We send this villager home um, to go build a archery range. We probably could have kept this villager and kept dropping like towers, like just tower crawling this way would have been pretty, pretty, pretty useful um, in retrospect. But our Khan does show up and he does decent damage with three damage. So we're gonna take our Khan and we just basically we're selecting the TC. And we selected the TC and the tower, and we're just trying to find this the sweet spot in between the ranges here of the two buildings, and um, just to where we can harass, right? So we're in range of these these guys here, and getting decent vision and just kind of harassing him, right? We do have our first Kashyyyk showing up, which is really important because Kashyyyks are really what's going to be able to to change the dynamic of this, right? He can't, Immediately the Keshek gets two villager kills, right? And the Keshek is a lot tankier and able to be under um, arrow fire a lot easier. So one Keshek, three villagers, is definitely, definitely worth. We don't lose this Keshek, but he has a one life. We wanted to go and uh, like attack something and heal up. We should have gone after this deer here. It was kind of a mistake on my part. And we are dropping more staples and a blacksmith. But this Kajik is going to rotate back in and go hit this. This this needs to heal. We want to heal it and come over here onto this food. And we really mess up. We run into a wolf here. But Kajik dives in, gets one more kill. Now this time it's one Kajik for one villager. Not nearly as worth, but still decent. You can see our opponent's floating a ton of ton of resources but he's uh, aging up now with economic wing so he's going to get a lot of villagers. Um, at this point I wonder if military reinforcement would have been 
would have been the play because he could have gotten three Desert Raiders and every two minutes gotten three more. So it would have put him in a little bit more defendable position, getting free military. Um, but yeah, when we moved over here, this wolf sniped our, our Keshik, unfortunately. So if that Keshik had stayed alive, he would have served a pretty big um, role in just harassing over here. But we see villagers moving. We see um, over here, we got pretty good vision of the map, right? Especially around his base. And we're just producing more units. Um, we don't notice his castle age coming through. We know it's coming, right? Because he's, you know, going to commit to more troops. And we have a decent amount of units here. And um, yeah, we're just bringing in more cav. So he tries to get a tower up, and we do spot this, and it's a time to dive because if he gets that tower up, it becomes much. Much more difficult to break this um, location, so we're able to do pretty good damage here. Again, I have almost complete vision of his base because of this con position, and every time he tries to commit um, to building this up, we just commit to a dive, and his TC is just gonna do what it can, and his villagers are gonna get kind of idled out on this wood line. This wood line basically been idled out by this uh, con now. We also now have a lot more Keshiks here. With four Keshiks, we should be able to get the burden down on this um, tower fairly comfortably now. And though we have a eco lead because of the five traders, we do not have a villager lead still. So these towers again are coming in clutch. This tower has its, its defense. He ages up. He does not have any gold really to work with here. Um, he used it on Camel Lancers, I guess, so he does have a stable up somewhere that I haven't spotted. It must be up here. But we do burn this down, kill a couple of veils, and he pulls a bunch of villagers here to deal with our um, tower here. Luckily, we have more troops right laying this way, and the Keshiks are able to get some damage in, and um, Io has Wood Eco, right, which is a big deal. And you can see that we're rallying Mangadaya here and rallying calf so um, we still haven't spotted his his stable and again if we had left our, our villager here just dropping another tower here to really get better vision here would have been a pretty big deal but he does have his camel lancer up um, we do have to be a little bit careful fighting this camel lancer it's just one so we can fight it um, with our cab we just have to be careful right he commits to a dive here and he's starting to lose a lot of villagers now we do garrison here so we get some tower damage um, you know, a couple of free villager kills is nice. Um, so, you know, we had a couple villagers. We killed probably five villagers in that exchange, maybe a little bit more. We dropped some moss, which is really ballsy. But the rest of our cab is showing up now. That's a lot of villagers and a lot of weak villagers. And we decided to take the cab, not to hit the villagers, but we wanted to hit the camel lancers. We do miss micro a little bit. Because if we kill his lancers, he doesn't really have anything to keep us from just full on diving his um, TC here. Again, if we go for a castle age play behind this, um, we could. But we definitely just want to keep suffocating him. He's struggling to get onto gold and things like that, so pretty important. Not having this um, arrow slits upgrade was a pretty big mistake too because um, this, this goal could be basically denied at this point and it's not being denied. But we are bringing our cavalry over to come kind of deal with this and um, our production has ramped up significantly or is going to ramp up significantly now with a couple more staples and um, yeah. You can see he's got, I mean, a ton of villagers, right? Even um, our eight, we, we must have idled our TC significantly, too. So kind of misplaced by us as well. Idling our TC as much as we did. So this tower is able to do some pretty good uh, damage because it takes out um, some of the camel lancers. Um, and we do get the upgrade on the tower here. We're able to kind of survive here. Uh, him losing a uh, camel lancer is big, so every time we kill a camel lancer, we're pretty happy about that. And this tower being almost dead is pretty big deal too. Well, not almost dead, but 
losing having a fifth of its life off is pretty nice. And we see his villagers, like a, a grand portion of his base. We were a little bit worried about him rotating off to sheep here, since he was on our farms here. And so we just follow this Camel Lancers, commit to the, the fight on the Camel Lancers. And he's kind of misclicking and bringing the villagers up, but he's got a lot of villagers that are just one shot at this point, right? So we're up on this other wood line. We just want to make sure he's not getting a lot of wood. Wood is production buildings, right? And farms, so, and towers, so. Um, as important as gold is to shut off, which it is, as well as food, uh, wood is also definitely kind of like the backbone to your, to what you can do in a game. So this is why we keep kind of just hitting his wood line where we can, and he's down to just a couple camel lancers. I mean, we kind of basically maintained it to a couple camel lancers this whole time, and his villagers are kind of. I mean, just basically idle, right? And at this point, I would say the game is pretty much over. Um, probably a, a while ago, but um, maybe because I think he knows of my like all cab playstyle that he kind of wanted to play it out and see if he could do it, um, which I can respect. Camel answer charge is gonna be brutal. Yeah, I mean, it, tons of damage with that charge. But we still have vision, right? We still have pretty good vision. We can see this. We've lost a tower here, which is unfortunate, but we still have pretty good vision. It would have been nice to get some more towers dropped. And while we burn this, he does lose track of his villagers a little bit and loses a couple more villagers, which is pretty big. Three villagers go down. And um, besides the three villagers, he does lose a scout, which is actually a pretty big deal when your vision is really this hampered. But instead of... Um, Gold now being the issue, now food and wood is the issue, right? And we kind of understand that at this point. Um, so that's why we're kind of always trying to take fights here when we can and just kind of diving his wood lines and stuff. And so again, yeah, we're back here. And she's just going to come into a fight here. Sure, we're probably going to lose all these units, but we're killing a ton of villagers, right? So we don't care if we lose those couple Keshiks. This means idle time on his wood. Every every you know, every time he's not gathering wood, we're happy. And we still have two Keshiks here. So we traded out a little bit better. Um like he ended up pulling out, right? Of the fight there. And because he's committed to this, he's gonna lose this tower most likely. Losing a tower is pretty big, especially on your gold. So we kind of commit to this. We probably should have um, done a bit of job of focusing down that one camel lancer. But um, again, we have another mass coming. We've got we're up to five, sta four stables, four ranges. Yeah, four stables, four ranges, and nineteen traders. So yeah, we're not. I mean, it's definitely over at this point. But you just. Definitely, we're just trying to hit and raid everywhere that we can. We're sending this Keshik to go check out berries and woodline and go heal on that lumber camp. Um, a little bit of a misclick here that we're attacking the mining camp instead of the tower. But again, we see the, the, the Camel Lancer and we're just going to commit to that fight. Um, killing a Camel Lancer is always big. And his eco... Okay, he's going for stone and wood. I didn't even realize. So I guess this still might be the drop of keep. A keep drop would kind of stagnate us and force us to go to castle. So we're just checking those berries. Checking these berries. And you know, he's got 15 villagers, you know, half of the eco is just garrison. And we see villagers on stone. So we're just happy to commit to this fight, right? Under, under TC because it's a lot of villagers and then there's a lot of villagers over here that we're gonna get hit, so it worked out pretty well. Um, against the Ayabids, I do feel like a Dark Age kind of a gold play is definitely um, has quite a lot of viability to it. Maybe the meta has changed a little bit more feudal style, but I still think the majority of Ayabid players are playing um, are playing for like a fast castle kind of a play. 
Now this next match is against Maybach. Um, has playing in Delhi on Dry Arabia, and he's kind of like a a nemesis of ours. I feel like we've played him a lot, and um, usually we win, but not always. Um, he's definitely gotten the best of us a couple of times, a few times I would say actually. So we're just gonna go for fast stage two um, into Keshik versus Delhi. I usually find that being the best answer. And um, our opponent goes for something super unconventional. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, really throws us for a loop. Really throws us for a loop. As you can see in the production queue, he's got a Spearman. So he went for, he goes for Dark Age play. Now, if we had gone for Dark Age Spears, he would have been in a much worse position, right? Because Delhi doesn't beat models in Dark Age um, in Spear Aggro, just because they don't really have any eco bonuses that really match up versus the Ubu production bonus. Um, in a timely manner, right? Not fast enough. So, we dropped our Ubu, we're collecting gold, and we're just kind of doing our thing. We He's done this build against us once before, I mean, he's played it normally a bunch too, so um, we weren't entirely expecting this. We're getting decent and cheap, and then we get the tag ping, and we're like, oh shit. He's doing this um, Dark Age Delhi play, which is kind of a, kind of interesting to deal with. Because it really does, um, really limits what you can do, so we're a little bit short on gold here. We pull a lot of villagers to go mine. We probably could have done a better job microing this and just pulling off the one villager that was hurt. And we just kind of miss micro in general here. Just pulling all the the vills and panic clicking. We are too gold short. So it's a little bit unfortunate here. Uber's gonna get burnt down. He's up to five spears. Um, but him as Delhi is suffering pretty significantly because he doesn't have a mosque, right? None of his eco techs are coming in. None of his techs are coming in, so um, this is a very all in style by Delhi, right? And it delays a lot of things for them as well. And against a normal Mongol player, it doesn't work. Against us specifically, this is kind of a pseudo viable strat. So we're kind of in a weird spot. We pull a bunch of those, mine some gold, come back. And we're happy, we're gonna start tapping up now. A little bit later than we would have liked, but it's okay. Um, one big thing is we didn't lose any villagers by this in this state. And I don't think he has vision of us, but yeah, so we decided to pull villagers and drop a tower on our gold. Um, it's really important we get a tower on our gold. We need to be able to kind of defend this and do something here. He's going for his H2 now. And there's no villagers here. So it's kind of unfortunate here that we had an opportunity to, to, to double tower. And we didn't take it. So he's heading over to the gold. And he was going to wall. He's going to double wall. Walling our Uru. I'm surprised he didn't fully wall it though. Because if, if you really want to deny, you have to fully wall it. Anywho. Um, we're gonna go scout his base now. We didn't do it once we saw like we were getting pushed. Like, because it's deadly, we're not really worried about it. And for our timing, we'd be hitting now and. Um, yeah. But now he's sending a villager over. So, this again is kind of where it's a little bit unfortunate for us. We didn't 
his uh, his eco attacks are just coming in, which is pretty wild. But um, yeah, we have we have the gold or the wood to drop a tower, but we want to save up the wood for an archery range. And unfortunately, we're kind of suffering for food and stuff, so <clears throat> we didn't mass up our. Or Megadine in time. If we had gone archers, right, we would have been in a good spot. I think if you make archers here, you hold this pretty easily. Or if we had built a second tower here, we would have been in a good spot. But instead, we kind of just stuck to our playstyle. And now we're in a weird spot. So we're going try to try to bring our comm back. We do drop an Uvu up at the top. And we just use the Mangadai to kind of bait these archers in. And we're just trying to hit the villager. But we do kind of a mistake here. You see how we we put our our Khan and the Mangadai together and then we um, just let them get sniped out here. Because if we have the Khan and the Mangadai together and we kind of keep them alive here, we can bait this and kind of pick out that villager in time. Because basically, my I just need to get two more hits in with my my manga die, and I would have been able to deny that. So bad micro needs to us put you in a really rough situation now. Because now we have to abandon this gold, right? He's gonna drop a second tower, which is definitely kind of unnecessary. But we're gonna drop a tower over on this other gold, move a girl over, and we'll be fine. Would have been nice to have this upgraded. Um. Not using our stone for that might be a little bit of a mistake. So we're gonna bring a Magadite and a Khan over to go kind of deal with that scout. A little bit of a mistake on our part, not cutting across with our Magadite earlier. Because um, I'm pretty sure the scout is faster than the Magadite, so you do have to like cut across at a better time. We do have maneuver arrow up in 18. Uh, I feel like we're too too long. So he's burning down our next Ibu. So again, this is a lot of wood. That a second a second tower here would have defended this as well. So that's kind of like a bad thing. So we've wasted a lot of wood at this point, and he's getting siege engineering first, which definitely is. I mean, we weren't privy to this information. Going silver tree. Is a little bit greedy, but deer stones. I mean, it, it helps your eco, but it's really not a huge bonus. Again, now we just start getting the outpost up, and he spots our Magadai and our Khan, so he towers, gets in his tower, and we just gotta hurry and garrison inside here and get some damage on these uh, um, these spearmen here. Able to pick up one, but I think that's all we pick up. We should have pulled a couple villagers here just to start repairing this, or just one villager. And by the time we do even like think about doing it, it's just way too late, and we're gonna lose this tower, which is a pretty big deal again. Um, because it does establish kind of the north side of our base here. Um, we're gonna start making horsemen. We need to make horsemen because we need something to burn these outposts. We might have been able just to go castle here, and I do think if we go just straight castle here, we might die. It's tough to say. Maybe with a normal build, you don't die. You drop up barracks from men at arms, and you hold. We do try to dive this over the villager here, but he does a good job noticing. And um, yeah, we're. Behind on veils because of idle TC. Uh, we've idled our TC once. It seems like for at least 20 seconds for us to be behind one full veil. You're always one behind as Mongols, but we're full two villages behind, so something must have happened. Does a good job garrisoning here again. And we're just massing up some cav to deal with this. At the same time, he's massing up archers. Um, it's just kind of natural for Delhi to do this. So we kind of expect it. What did he age up with? Down with a faith. Okay, so I think if he ages up with the Tower of Victory there, he might actually like kill us because the archers are so good. And we start sending Cav out to go raid. Um, 
um, food sources because we know he's got his berries and his deer and his sheep, but he'll be moving to deer, he'll be moving to berries and stuff. So we did want to start um, sending some cab out to counter raid and get some damage in because we're kind of behind where we should be. We've wasted, we've lost a lot of resources, right? We lost a tower, two ulus. Um, so we definitely wanted to get our army set up. We do see him walling down over here. Um, we drop a quick tower here just because if his army comes over, we're in a bad situation. And um, yeah, we just gotta kind of hunger down on this gold and hold. There's another one right next to it, so we can kind of leave Frogger away there. Um, sucks that it's walled out, but it is, so it is what it is. We're on deer over here, and we're on berries over here, the two closest um, food sources to him. And he does spot out our sneaky Uru. Um, we try to build a sneaky outpost on this other berry patch, but he does notice with his scout. So we're going to take the cab force we have here to come, to come over here and help this villager survive. And we're just kind of running at this point. Armor's coming to come help. Mostly Cav. Just a couple of Mangadai to help out. New is up. And he's got three Spearmen. So we do try to kite the Spearmen with the Mangadai a little bit. We just kind of want to protect these this villager, right? And we don't want to take that fight yet, so we do back out. Um, and we're going to commit into these towers now, I believe. Okay, snipe that villager, which is actually kind of important now. He's idled his TC at some point because now we're equaled up on villager count. He's going to burn this down, but we do see his army, right? Five spears, nine archers, so we do see it's mostly archer comp, so we're kind of happy we've gone double stables at this point. And we're going to commit to a burn down here. Um, we've lost Mangadai. Which is unfortunate, um, but we're taking out this tower, take out these spearmen, and he does a good job of spotting us here on these deer, and he has an army to establish this, so we weren't able to deny this, but we do realize this has happened. Um, so it's good that we know that this, is, that this has happened, right? It's important um, to know where his, where his units are, his villages are at. Um, getting this burn down on these two towers and this mining camp is kind of nice. It's going to give us a little bit of resources. <clears throat> At which point another Ubu probably would have been warranted here, but we were definitely tight on resources. And we did want to burn these palisades. In part just to heal up, but... Um, once he starts capping, but we see the army here, and we see four scholars. With the four scholars here, it kind of tells us that it's a Dome of the Faith play. And we wanted to go deny um, this first one, but we see all of his army, so we knew it's kind of a bad fight. So we decided to go to the second, um, this second sacred site. We did see his Gazi raiders running around, so we are on alert to be able to garrison here. Ubu is almost up. Um, he does notice the... I don't know if he notices us or the wolves killing, but either way we take out a Scholar, which is, again, kind of nice. Killing Scholars is important. We do see his Gazi Rages up here. Um, and we're just kind of ready to pull this villager back if need be. And this is, um, in part where we're rallying Consolidated here, and then his three Gazi Rages make it over here. I think we are going to lose one villager here. Maybe not. Okay, we don't. Um, but he commits an army here, and it sucks because we just got the Uhu up, right? <laughs> so it's, it hasn't paid for itself at all. Um, really unfortunate. Over here, though, we are able to deny this um, this berry getting dropped. It would have been nice if it was double Keshik instead of one horseman on Keshik, but just kind of was, is what it was. And he builds a wall here. Just kind of cheeky. We're not able to get a villager, but we're able to pick the Ghazi, and we do have this tower we can go burn down, which is nice. And we did bring our army forward to go kind of try to snipe that um, that villager transition. 
Oh, we should have just taken out these these um, archers immediately, and we didn't. It's a little bit of a mistake. But we're massing our armies here. We're dropping some towers in our base. We do have to hold this push. Um, pretty importantly, we do decide to turn and take this fight. And he starts kind of hitting us with his battering ram. And we'll uh, we'll get some damage in with the horseman and the Keshek here. You know, it's pretty decent damage. You can see pretty quickly how much damage we can do on that. And we dive on his his deers. We're able to um, snipe out that uh, that ram, but we have to fall back here. And then and we have decent numbers. They aren't able to torch down fast enough. Um, which is unfortunate, and we commit to the torch down here. I feel like we should have just evacuated this at this point. So we commit to that fight, which is a bad fight, and then um, we move this building, we're getting another tower, and we're dropping a lot of stables because this is mostly an archer mass, right? And we just kind of have to rely on our TC to deal with the spears. We do disengage from this fight, it's not a good fight for us. And we lose one pasture, probably something we could have repositioned. Um, and we get some damage in on this ram, we just have to fall back, we lose one Keshik. And he does start capping up here. <laughs> and we just have to um, garrison here. We probably should have pulled the garrison sooner. Um, and we lose a lot of villagers here. They kind of just like, go on kind of weird paths. We were able to kill one of the rams, which is big. Um, and we go for the other one because the big thing is if we kill the rams, sure we lose some units and stuff, but if he doesn't have rams, he cannot stay here under this. Um, we're able to pick up one more villager here, I believe, on the stone and just kind of start healing up on that. You can see his army has to fall back once there isn't a ram, but now he's got good resources, villager advantage, and um, yeah. Sacred sites. We send Cav up to this sacred site. Where did this scholar go? We were trying to find that scholar. Maybe that wolf killed it. That wolf must have killed that scholar. But we're decapping two of the sites. Oh, here's that scholar then, maybe. We were able to kill a scholar, which is nice. And then he sends an army over to deal with this. He does remember that there was an army here, so that's a good job on him. And he's making rams, and we can see these rams. So what we're gonna do is just drop some towers. We just needed a lot of towers to deal with this. It's pretty much the only way. And um, we start rallying some horsemen here to start burning this palisade wall. We do need to start trading to really be able to um, do something. <laughs> And um, yeah, three rams is a pretty serious, pretty serious threat here. But because he's invested in three rams, um, we're pretty confident he didn't have a huge army here. And so the towers are able, and this TC are able to do quite a bit of work here on these spearmen. And these spearmen going down is pretty important because um, once the spearmen go down, there's nothing that's going to kill our Kashyyyk and our horsemen. Really. Like the archers are going to do damage, but not a ton. We do commit some uh, villagers here to burn down these um, rams, and we tried raiding over here with these village with these horsemen, um, and we're not able to get any villager kills. But we're able to hold here at our base, which is pretty important. But we do lose again a couple more vills, so we don't lose as many vills um, as we probably could, should have. But again, a little bit late here on repairing this, so a little bit of a mistake. I'm gonna go for another decap, and we know that he's dropped three towers on this berry. So, again, this really kind of shows that he's really kind of swinging with his um, units here and there. We lose our Keshik here. We do have a bunch of horsemen down on this other berry patch, which would be kind of a natural rotation for him or this berry patch, right? So, he's floating in an absolute shit ton of wood at this point, and he's capping again. So, but we are starting to trade. It's not great trade. It's really bad trade. 26 gold trade. <laughs> but it's trade. And it's going to help our eco kind of um, get back to where it needs to. And our eco is in a really tough spot. So, the big thing here is we just need to trade. Or we need to re-rating. 
So we try to get on. We know these berries, these deers are gone. And perhaps we can get on the sacred site here. So we start burning sacred site. This is dangerous because it's fully boxed. So if you get caught inside of the sacred site, you can definitely get um, your army trapped. So we're aware of this. This wolf is doing God's work for us. And we have five horsemen burning these towers down. Again, this is just income for us. And um, getting rid of defenses on his part is pretty big. So we start burning our escape path here. We need some couple mangadai here. We do have to run these guys, but we did kill at least one tower. And we see the the Gazi here, and we click our units to run out. But look at this pathing. Like, what the heck is that? Oh my god. I can't even. That's retard, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, so the unit pathing is really bad. You have to babysit a lot. So we just have to completely fall back here, which is unfortunate. But we are going to decap this northern site, which is great. Um, using this Mangadai is a little bit rough, but again, not terrible. And then we're getting chased by only Gazis here, so we can turn with our Keshex if we need to. And um, yeah, he's got a ton of wood and gold. Disgusting amount of wood and gold, so he should be trading and buying um, resources. So um, a really good player would have bought like food up or an aged up, or he would have just bought for more units. So either way, um, we've decapped this. We have another raiding force we can send to his food to the north. He's dropping rams inside of our vision. We see three rams, which is pretty, pretty wild. This villager, unfortunately, that was gonna build on our trade, gets taken out, and we're up to five villagers. We do notice this raid coming in. We're paying a lot of attention here to the south. We're gonna move a girl over to this other wood line, and we're able to garrison um, over here to deal with that. And we're just losing our traders here, unfortunately. Um, behind this, or over on this side, we're raiding, and we're getting onto these berry patch. Um, Fort Keshek are going to do quite a bit of work there. And we're able to turn the tides on this. He loses all of his cab force, which is pretty big, and he's losing all of these villagers here, which is really big. Um, because this is his next food rotation, which means he's going to have to drop farms, which is going to delay his food rotation a little bit, but he's got the wood to do it. He's got, he's floating way too many resources, and maybe at this point he thought we were just going to tap out. So that's why he wasn't like really investing as much as he should have. But um, we commit to the fight here, and we're cleaning up all of his spears. Um, and but there is four, <laughs> five rams, so he can definitely chew up our TC very quickly. Um, and we pull a bunch of vill villagers over to this northern wood because our wood lines are forward and not really safe anymore. So we're gonna be able to take this fight, um, no problem, and clean this up at this point. But the big issue is um, our TC, right? So one big plus as Mongols, if you just pack it up, um, they're not actually gonna be able to um, ram you down. So we're able to kind of clean that up. But he's tapping up the castle behind this. But he's going House of Learning again, kind of a kind of a weird choice. He still has a really big strong scholar blob, but um like having more scholars even on this fight would have been a big a big thing. Just to help heal up his army, so we got plenty of villagers on food at this point. He's aged up. He's gonna get his his techs which are gonna take a minute. <clears throat> but he doesn't he doesn't have a military lead anymore. And a lot of this military is um, scholars at this point, right? So he's only actually got six units. So he went super all in and um, kind of put him in a weird spot. We're still trading. We're up to three traders now. Four traders. <coughs> yeah. But we're going to take these cab and come over to this other um, Berry patch. We know the berries are gone, but there's towers here. So this is free income and just taking out static defenses that we don't want to deal with later. 
he beat Cap here, and now he doesn't. I think he's only got one side cap, yeah. So we'll kind of cut down his food trickle a little bit here. And with trade going, we're kind of normalizing our eco with his. So it's just all going to be about looking for looking for raids at this point. So this army with the with the Khan and the Magda, we're just checking out this berries, and we're going to check out this gold, and again we're going to check out this wood line. I will probably commit to burning down this. Um, there's one food left in that deer. And yeah, we're just burning this down, getting our worth out of here. Um, we probably should have gotten our our raid bounty improved for this game for sure. We do react a little bit late, so take a lot more damage than we should have. But we're burning down over here at the same time. That's two mills. That's good income. Um, I really wish we had gotten our our improved raid bounty. It was definitely worth it to get it this game. But a little bit late, and then it happens, so. We're gonna pull a lot of villagers and start typing up our age up, our curl tie. And then we noticed after his all in, we did a good job of like pushing him and really like noticing that he didn't have an army to really to defend. So we can't take that tempo back. And he's gonna go capture this sacred site. We pull some villagers just to go shank him. <laughs> But we, I mean, we caught a lot of villagers out in the open over here. And our cab force decides to help clean up this army just so our other force kind of stays alive. Um, so we just kind of take the fight. But we're able to pick, I think, like one villager there. Maybe two. Which is nice. And we finish shanking this monk. And we're getting our um, our techs up. And um, we're still in just one thing. He does drop his his monk to Wobolo, but it's to the side of us. It's not really going to get us. And again, his army is, is coming up, but it's dying immediately. He's only got two archers. There's 18 military, all scholars. So he's rushing his techs up, right? Which is good. But if you don't have an army for those techs, it doesn't help, right? Um, but, I mean, he's got to have a really strong eco. So, picking off this scholar was kind of nice, but... Again, we're kind of looking around for his villagers. We don't know where they're at. Where were his villagers? So, they were farm transitioning in the back. Dropping a keep on this gold. So, we should have known to send units to the other side but we were rallying towards the middle just to kind of control the sacred site so we probably could have denied like this these keeps and stuff but it happens um we're still up to nine traders so our eco hasn't fully taken like boom but it is um taking the lead right and we do notice that his army is upgraded but it's not um it's not big right we're taking these fights really confidently um without really any issues here and we're still sitting on these berries and these deers right if he does roach it to these food patches and now we're gonna go check out this uh this wood see the stone at the same time when we do it and we notice um, some lancers, some gazis, some archers, and anything that's little fights that we can take, you know, a couple units here and there, we definitely want to take. Villagers stuck in a tower, we want to take this fight as well. Um, but once these units show up, um, we just drop our defense hill so we don't take too much damage as we retreat. Again, not a super favorable fight under a tower. Over here, we start rotating to check out these gold mines. A little bit late on the rotation again. If we hit this rotation like two minutes ago, we deny this keep drop, right? So we notice the keep drop. We're able to dive onto his villagers, get a couple of villager kills, but again, um, the fact that he's got a keep and he's established that map control is really big. And then we notice that we're setting up market for a longer market trade and we see the triple tower drop on his berries and stuff, so. Um, it is what it is, but we do kill quite a few villagers here. We kill five villagers, which is nice. And we're kind of meat grinding them here um, by the curl tie, which is great for us. Um, it's really favorable 
fights for us to take here under control type um, aura. He does try to chop a tower there, but we're able to deny it. Our first siege workshop is coming up. And all of these fortified outposts, that's pretty crazy. But I guess it could be pseudo worth it. Um, we do have a tower over here upgraded. And our trade is up to a whopping 11. Um, but you can tell he's kind of messed up his villager productions pretty significantly. And so now all these towers are up, are fortified. So getting damage in, they don't, we don't do nearly as much damage um, with our torches at this point. And we're just going to keep rallying on the curl pie. But we, we did want to take out a tower um, because then we can take out a whole bunch of villagers, right? Five villagers. And raids are kind of what's keeping us in this game at this point. He tries to ungarrison some villagers and they just get marked. Which is great, five villagers down. Uh, we do commit to the full burn down because, um... Yeah, if he's upgrading it, we're going to be in big trouble. Going for this triple, this with tower with three villagers, was probably, yeah, a mistake. So we do decide to fall back here, which is good. And wait till we get some siege, which we do have on the way. Rams. Um, we still have a raiding force here, and we're just kind of running around seeing what we can hit. And um, we're just kind of taking these fights, trying to move the curl play up a little bit. We just have to be careful about being inside of this spring old range. And now that the ram is here, we do want to accompany the ram to make sure we can um, protect it. But at the same time, he starts making a tower elephant. And um, they are some pretty serious momentum swingers. So he does have towers, or sprinkle towers, set up on his farm, you know? Um So once we see this, we just try to stay outside of range, but it's kind of tough to do. And uh, towers do go down here. But our army is getting kind of beaten up by this tower elephant. So we need Keshex here really to deal with this tower elephant. We lost our Mangata down here. We're still burning down this wall segment. <coughs> but we're happy with um, what our Rams did here, cleaning up these berries. Because there's still quite a bit of food left on these berries, right? Again, another burn down. Um, raid bounty improved would have been huge. Um, definitely something we should have gotten, and we didn't. Um, we mm, totally misplaced this, which is okay. Not end of the world, but not great. We're up to 14 traders, so keeping the markets going. Where are these guys going? Yeah, just sitting on the berries. We're able to clean up that first elephant. No, we're not able to. That first elephant's alive. We do lose a couple units. We need to keep those rams alive. But we're just switching into a bunch of stables here. Yeah, you can see we're pretty heavy on our our eco, our wood eco here for infrastructure for siege and just in general infrastructure. Curl ties back up. Another tower elephant, but this time it's surrounded by Keshik, so it's not gonna do very well. We do have to fall back our rams. Still just kind of pushing forward, and at this point you can tell his he's stagnated really badly with his villager um, production. We take our Mangadai to go raid this next gold. We don't know if he's on this gold or this gold, but this is a gold, so we're gonna check it out. We don't find anything. These are rams, a little bit unfortunate. Again, not end of the world. We do have our first manga now, and we're going to make a prayer tent. We have one relic to pick up, but we do have sacred sites, right? We kind of have, we don't have map control, but we have um, kind of a forward positioning with the girl tie that we're being, we're able to kind of hold here. And we've done decent eco damage, um, not game ending by any means, but we kind of felt confident now with our trade and stuff. We we're at least par. We didn't expect to be ahead in numbers like we are, but we're definitely par for the course. Um, we do see another keep trying to get dropped up here. Kind of a weird keep drop. They're definitely not worth it to drop it up there. 
Um, and then our Megan, I do find his farms back here, so. Just kind of harass him back here. He's forced to react, basically. And then our, um. Our mango is inside of his tower range, which was. Luckily, it gets on the curl time, otherwise, it would be dead at this point. We do do a run by over here. Kill a couple of veils. Which is nice. That's one thing with um, H3 Mangadite, you can do a lot of hit and run type of things and be okay. We're gonna take our Mangadols and just heal them up back here. Try to come into a burn down here. Probably not worth it again. So we do fall back. Excuse me. <laughs> Eco, kind of spreading it on this wood line. Up to 20 traders. This is still really bad mining. And, um, we kind of felt comfortable in terms of like. That he's kind of in his base, kind of corralled up. And we figured he's probably dropping a lot of keeps. I'm producing villagers from these keeps. But you can see even his town center. Yeah, he's a little bit late on this. Oh, he's he's starting to get a bunch of villager production out of it, so. His eco is really going to start scaling here pretty hard. But we do start capping sacred sites. And then he's investing a lot of resources into villager production now, so his triple TC now is going to start catching up. Um, his whole army is here. And kind of a bottleneck bottleneck fight for us and a bad fight for us. Um, we do bring our mangoes up to try to drop it on um, his units, but there's not there's not good at all. So a really bad fight we take here. A really bad fight. But we have a ton of food. Um, we have absolute tons of food. So we just look to tap up to Ampere. We knew we lost our we lost this fight and it might be a bad moment to tap up the imp. But we still have curl type buff. And we had thought our opponent had been playing fairly passively. We do see this gold vein over here happening. Um perhaps we haven't seen it yet, but we know it's we're going to spot it here shortly. Um but the big reason we go white stupa is um because we have to commit to um, having some sort of advantage over our opponent in terms of our siege and our bombard towers and things like that. If he goes imp and he gets all of his free upgrades, um, he's gonna kind of lose a lot of tempo going into imp. So we definitely wanted to put him in like a in an uncomfortable spot, right? So we're able to kill this, we take our army to go up there and we just rallied more troops here. And we got a decent siege ball at this time. We knew he had three spring ults, so we knew we were going to have to get more springs. Um, but we're getting our roller shutter triggers, which is going to really help to keep us alive. We're getting Siha Bolins and Veteran Mangadite, or Elite Mangadite, but we're not making any. We're just making mass <laughs> horsemen because that's really kind of what we what we can afford more than anything at this point. But we're gonna drop towers production. We gotta drop us more towers here. So this is to start getting um Um cannon placements and, and such. I think this tower is the one of the first towers to get cannon placements, yeah. So we run into these villagers by chance when they start rotating onto deer here. So more villagers killed, which is great. We do spot this tower, so we should, it would be nice if they were focused onto the tower, but looks like they're not. 
And we did send a ram all the way across the map earlier. Our uh, Springholds shred his Springholds. And we're gonna take out his Mango. Oh, that's not focusing his Mango. It's a little bit of miss micro on my part. Not hitting that Mango sooner. But just the Springholds on their own here are doing a lot of damage. 38 damage shots. Um, and healing. Self healing under that girl tie, which is big. And up here to the north, we're getting quite a bit of damage. Um, we did want to get like our our bounty and improved torches and all these things here, and we still haven't gotten them, which is kind of a, a mistake. But after clearing up that army, we knew he was kind of in an uncomfortable spot where he might be trying to go for Imp himself, and he just committed a lot of units, so we should be able to free to raid. And we had tons of food, so we really need to be sending troops out to, to idle and raid where we can. And this is where we kind of see his his new his new base here by this wood, right? So we were able to kill a couple of villagers. But this is a lot of idle time. And yes, it's probably not worth it um, in terms of uh, like strict value. But the idle time is definitely significant, right? And just the general pressure. His houses are doing so much damage. We do cap a second uh, sacred site behind this as well. And uh, we've done quite a bit of work here, right? We've taken out a lot of towers here with this force. And um, sure, we're losing this army, but quite a bit of pressure here. And behind that pressure, we're kind of um, pushing forward onto this... Uh, Into this villagers over on this side. And he did end up dropping a keep here on that, which is pretty well because it doesn't truly secure anything. And here with Elite Mangadai, we're just running through and by. We do finally start getting our bounty upgrade, which is big because we're gonna start gonna get um 75. Food and gold, which is big, so it pays for itself very quickly. He does try to quick wall us here. I believe he succeeds, yeah. A little bit of miss micro on my part, not paying attention there, but it is what it is, not a big deal. Because uh, we have a bunch of rams, and we're going to kind of really solidify this east side now, and we're really starting to creep across and take map control at this point. And we are dropping towers here. And, uh, yeah, I mean. Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty chaotic game, but it's it's worked out so far. Able to take out this attempt at walling this off. <laughs> we're, we're able to get that monk in there. It's pretty well, but gets taken out quickly. It's a bad fight um, because we're a little bit inside the keep range, and we're mostly Mangadai, and mostly Mangadai gets shredded against tower elephants. So we need quite a few Keshik. So we've been, you know, setting a lot of suicide raids and just getting damage in where we can. This keep to the south is a viable option, but it's a little bit in a weird spot. So we'd rather consolidate this middle sacred site and then kind of branch off to the east or to the south. So that's kind of why we commit to pulling back our troops here and fighting this. Um, Plenty of horsemen can really shred those tower elephants, as well as the the spring ults. Spring ults do great damage, as well as the bombard against the elephants. So it really kind of reconsolidated our position here fairly fairly easily once we you know grouped up our army here. Behind this, you know, just trying to get some some damage in and just see if he's repopulating the swarms. Dropping another tower here, dropping something here. And yeah, just kind of sending a lot of forwards forward to suicide because we have a lot of, we have, we're basically pop cap, right? And we need to commit units. <coughs> and he commits a, a ton of villagers here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's a massive amount of villager kills here. Oh, okay, so decent, decent villager kills then. It's probably like 10 villager kills we got. Not the best, but decent. Yeah, his spring will start shooting our mango, but um, 
Yeah, it sucks, but he loses the spring wall versus the bombard, which is something I never want to happen. Again, and this is what I mean by taking this kind of forward consolidated spot. Establishing kind of a secret site control here. And losing that bombard it sucks, but <clears throat> this is kind of a really defensible position here with four spring walls with roller shutters. And he doesn't have roller shutters. And we are going to get our plate cutter point now. So I'm not really going to start doing some decent damage, though we still have. We still have to get incendiaries. Our gold income is probably still really shitty. We're only at 23 traders still. <clears throat> yeah, so that's a big reason why our gold income is bad. But the sacred sites are kind of supplementing us, and that's probably in part why we haven't realized it. Um, besides our, um, our eco being really um, almost maxed out, right? So we just keep kind of chipping away at this keep and it's pretty much GG at this point because he needs a whole age right and time as Delhi. maybe a different set can do this more easily but yeah he loses this keep and then he's gonna lose this tower and then if he loses this area right here it's definitely game over so um, definitely an interesting match, a pretty chaotic match with match with that early that early dive on us and kind of just having to hold and survive that. But um, I thought it was a decent game, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you all on the next one.